Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in chapter 11 of the Course Companion Reading Guide. Ego, I'm sorry, God or the Ego. We are on day 146, section 4, God's Blameless Son. We are reading out of A Course in Miracles, complete and annotated edition. And if you will please close your eyes and join me in a prayer. Dear Father, if left to my own devices, my perception will be skewed. I surrender to you everything that I think and feel. God, please take my past, plan my future, send your spirit to redeem my mind that I might be set free. May I be your channel, God, and serve the world. May I become who you would have me be, do what you would have me do, go where you would have me go, and say what you would have me say, and to whom, dear God. God, please enable me to set aside everything I think I know, especially about this reading today and A Course in Miracles, and this world, and you, and myself, and my brothers. Please allow me to have an open mind and a new experience. Thank you. Section 4, God's Blameless Son. Never forget that the sonship is your salvation, for the sonship is your soul. As God's creation, it is yours, and belonging to you, it is His. Your soul does not need salvation, but your mind needs to learn what salvation is. You are not saved from anything, but you are saved for glory. Glory is your inheritance given your soul by its creator, that you might extend it. But if you hate part of your own soul, 16, this is footnote 16, hating part of your own soul refers to hating a brother. So if you hate part of your own soul, all your understanding is lost because you are looking on what God created as yourself without love. And since what he created is part of him, you are denying him his place in his own altar. Can you try to make God homeless and know you are at home? Can the son deny the father without believing that the father has denied him? God's laws hold only for your protection, and they never hold in vain. What you experience when you deny your Father is still for your protection, for the power of your will cannot be lessened without the intervention of God against it, and any limitation on your power is not the will of God. 17. What you experience when you deny your father is that the power of your will carries that denial through consistently, resulting in a denial of yourself. This negative effect on you is still for your protection because it is a natural result of the power of your will, and it is ultimately to your benefit that God does not intervene against your will and limit its power. Therefore, look only to the power that God gave you to save you, remembering that it is yours because it is His, and join with your brothers in His peace. The peace of your soul lies in its, limitless, in its limitlessness. Limit the peace you share, and your own soul must be unknown to you. Every altar to God is part of your soul, because the light he created is one with him. Would you cut a brother off from the light that is yours? You could not do so if you realize that you can only darken your own mind. As you bring him back, so will your mind return. That is the law of God for the protection of the wholeness of His Son. Only you can deprive yourself of anything. Do not oppose this realization, for it is truly the beginning of the dawn of light. 
Remember also that the denial of this simple fact takes many forms, and these you must learn to recognize and oppose steadfastly and without exception. This is a crucial step in the reawakening. The beginning phases of this revolt. <laughs> The beginning phases of this reversal are often quite painful, for as blame is withdrawn from without, there is a strong tendency to harbor it within. It is difficult at first to realize this is exactly the same thing, for there is no distinction between within and without. If your brothers are part of you and you blame them for your deprivation, you are blaming yourself. And you cannot blame yourself without blaming them. That is why blame must be undone, not reallocated. Lay it to yourself and you cannot know yourself, for only the ego blames at all. Self-blame is therefore ego identification and as strong an ego defense as blaming others. You cannot enter God's presence if you attack his son. When his son lifts his voice in praise of his creator, he will hear the voice of his father. But the creator cannot be praised without his son for their glory is shared and they are glorified together. Christ is at God's altar waiting to welcome his Son. But come holy without condemnation, for otherwise you will believe the door is barred and you cannot enter. The door is not barred and it is impossible for you to be unable to enter the place where God would have you be. But love yourself with the love of Christ, for so does your Father love you. You can refuse to enter, but you cannot bar the door which Christ holds open. Come unto me who hold it open for you. Footnote 18, Matthew 11:28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Okay, okay, there we go. So come on to me who hold it open for you, for while I live it cannot be shut, and I live forever. God is my life and yours, and nothing is denied by God to his Son. Remember that to deny is to refuse to accept, and everything waits only your acceptance. At God's altar, Christ waits for the restoration of himself in you. God knows his son as wholly blameless as himself, and he is approached through the appreciation of his son. Christ waits for your acceptance of him as yourself and his wholeness as yours. For Christ is the Son of God who lives in his Creator and shines with his glory. Christ is the extension of the love and loveliness of God, as perfect as his Creator and at peace with him. Blessed is the Son of God, whose radiance is of his Father and whose glory he wills to share as his Father shares it with him. There is no condemnation in the Son, for there is no condemnation in the Father. Sharing the perfect love of the Father, the Son must share what belongs to Him, for otherwise He will not know the Father or the Son. Peace be unto you who rest in God, and in whom the whole Sonship rests. 19. Peace be unto you is said by Jesus four times in the King James Version as He appears to his disciples after his resurrection. In Luke 24, 36, and in John 20, 19, 20, 21, and 20, 26. Here, for example, is 20, 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst 
and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And that is the conclusion of Day 146, Section 4, God's Blameless Son. And here is Robert Perry's commentary. I love the language here that the sonship is your soul. We really tried to limit usage of the word soul since Jesus certainly seemed to want to limit it. But the references to your soul in this section were too priceless to change. The whole idea of soul is that it's personal to you. It's the spiritual element in you that's unique to you. In the, it is, in this sense, your own private possession. So this first sentence means that your own personal spiritual element, your own soul, is the whole sonship. And this means that every single person alive is part of your own soul. So who can die? Doesn't that change your picture of yourself and of them? This idea is central to this section. It ends on this beautiful image of coming before God's altar, altar, excuse me, which seems to be a continuation of yesterday's image of entering God's temple. But what waits for us at God's altar is Christ, who is the collective self of the entire sonship. He, in other words, is the entire sonship wrapped up in one limitless self. Thus Christ is waiting at the altar. I'm sorry, thus Christ waiting at the altar signifies him waiting for your acceptance of him as yourself and his wholeness as yours. This can just bring me to tears. It's so beautiful. I mean, the reading, this whole section. To unite with Christ at the altar, then, means to accept everyone as part of you and to accept the entire sonship as your own soul. If we don't accept everyone, if we don't appreciate everyone as God's son, if we hold even the slightest bit of condemnation in our heart toward anyone, then we cannot reach that altar. We will believe the door is barred to us. We think the door is barred to us by all kinds of factors outside our control, don't we? For instance, we think the door is bar I think the door is barred to me because difficult people draw out my ego. If they didn't draw it out, it would be like it wasn't there at all. It's thus essentially their fault that it's there. I think the door is barred to me because the nice long meditations I would like to have are cut short by the need to get my kids off to school. I need to remind myself of that key line from paragraph 4. Only you can deprive yourself of anything. Only I can deprive myself of God. That door is not barred. I have made free choices that cause me to imagine that the door is barred. Those choices take two key forms in this section. First, I condemn a brother. This means that I hate part of my own soul. Now, by limiting the peace I share, I can't know my limitless soul. By cutting a brother off from the light that is mine, I have darkened my own mind. All these are forms of denying that the sonship is my soul, that Christ is myself, and this makes me imagine that the door has been barred and I cannot reach the Christ at the altar. Second, I condemn myself. I have started down the path of non-condemnation and I am earnestly trying to stop blaming others. What happens then is perfectly natural. After all, why do I blame others in the first place? To deflect responsibility onto them so that I won't have to feel guilty for my own failures of responsibility. If I then stop deflecting that responsibility onto them, what's going to happen? The answer couldn't be more obvious. As blame is withdrawn from without, there is a strong tendency to harbor it within. The self-blame is very seductive. It seems so much more honest and so much more innocent. 
that is why we have to hear Jesus' emphatic Jesus's emphatic words. It is difficult at first to realize that this blaming oneself is exactly the same thing as blaming others, for there is no distinction between within and without. This is a very powerful section. Self-blame is therefore ego identification and is strong in ego defense as blaming others. We think blame has to go somewhere. It's like the pea in the shell game. The only question is which shell it's under. Can we accept that the whole concept needs to be gone from our minds? That blame must be undone, not reallocated. For the fact is, you cannot enter God's presence if you attack His Son. And His Son is all your brothers, and His Son is yourself. Thank you so much for joining with me in this reading today. Section 4 of Chapter 11, God or the Ego, God's Blameless Son. I love you. Thank you.